Off today, I'm Nestor Nakanta with the Pacific Daily News. Here are our top stories from the PDN Newsroom. A burglary suspect was charged Monday with firing a gun at police as he and two accomplices tried to evade capture. The suspects were identified in a magistrate's complaint filed in Superior Court Monday as Ethan Jarrett Aguero, Vicente Trevor Aguero, and Kawhi Le Mendiola. Around 1 a.m. Sunday, police responded to a reported burglary at High Rule Market in Mangila, where a witness reported seeing two men forcibly enter the store through the front doors. They fled in a dark sedan, which police were able to locate. Officers conducted a traffic stop, and the car stopped in the middle of the road with its lights off. Then it drove off at a high rate of speed, despite police having their lights and sirens activated. Several shots were fired from the vehicle during the pursuit, and an officer returned fire, according to a news release from the Guam Police Department. Nobody was injured as a result of the gunfire, police said. In other news, in a bid to lower airfares, legislation was introduced by Guam Delegate James Moylan and Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands Delegate Gregorio Sablon to allow flights from Guam or the CNMI by foreign air carriers to other U.S. destinations. House Resolution 8786 states that its purpose is to allow certain foreign air carriers to stop in Guam or the Northern Mariana Islands in the course of transportation of passengers or cargo in either direction between a place in the United States and a place outside the United States and for other purposes. In a statement, Delegate Moylan said United Airlines is the only domestic carrier that provides routes between Guam and the CNMI as well as to Guam and Hawaii. This is an issue which has been building, Moylan said, citing recent concerns over United's pet policy, native bird repatriation program, and $500 airfares between Guam and the CNMI. If H.R. 8786 were to become law, Moylan said, a foreign carrier could provide services between Guam and the CNMI, Guam and Hawaii, or even consider a route between Guam and one of the contiguous states. And finally, a pair of bills vetoed by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero that would help the Office of Public Accountability were brought back to the floor during the first day of the June legislative session on Monday and one, and are now set for an override vote. The first was Bill 213 by Senator Tello Tidegui, which would have established deadlines for agency heads to submit required documents for the Office of Public Accountability audits. Agency heads who failed to meet the deadline would personally be assessed a $250 fine for each missed day. A previous override attempt for Tidegui's bill on April 26 failed. The second bill set for an override vote is Senator Joanne Brown's Bill 227, co-sponsored by Tidegui, which would enhance the independent status of the Office of Public Accountability by continuously appropriating one quarter of one percent of the annual GovGuam budget to the OPA. A bill that would preclude employers from requiring pre-employment cannabis tests for prospective employees moved to the voting file Monday after debate and amendments. Monday was the first day of the June legislative session. Bill 637, sponsored by Senator Will Parkinson, stated, Unless required by federal law, no employer, landlord, college, or government agency shall require any person, as a condition of employment, housing, education, or government services, to participate in a blood, breath, or, or urine test for the detection of marijuana, the bill states. Responsible marijuana use should not be a barrier to employment, Parkinson said in his opening remarks on the bill. In other news, Tumon Bay Mall developer Goodwin Development Corporation said it's ready to support the government of Guam to provide space for Simon Sanchez High School or for other government services. Goodwin Senior Vice President and Leasing Manager Philip Shiragi in a statement said the company is a strong supporter of GovGuam in its efforts to provide for the island's students and government services. The company in a release Monday said the Tumon Bay Mall was recently shown to representatives from the Guam Department of Education and the governor's authorized representative as a possible temporary home for Simon Sanchez High while the permanent school is being built. No further discussions have occurred with GDOE regarding a time frame, construction, or a cost estimate for the potential property lease. That's according to the company. Finally, a man who was wanted for questioning in connection with a May shooting in Mighty has been charged with felony assault, terrorizing, and weapons crimes, according to a magistrate's complaint filed in Superior Court. 29-year-old DJ Tosio has denied any knowledge or involvement in the May 3 shooting that left a 14-year-old girl injured. He has not been charged in that case. Alleged gang leader Mesamwam Repwak, who was, a, who was wanted in connection with several crimes, including the shooting, was captured on May 10th in Sinahanya. Tosio, the subject of a wanted flyer issued by the Guam Police Department, was arrested Saturday after losing control of a 2016 Volkswagen Golf and crashing it into a concrete utility pole. On June 4, police 
police received a report that the car had been rented to someone in April with an agreement to extend the rental until May 15, but it was never returned. For more of these stories, go to GuamPDN.com and follow us on social media.